Hello, today's quick video is on spark plug basics. So today we have NGK spark plugs and uh, we have the standard ground electrode and we have a fine wire electrode. And then this one always also has a fine wire ground electrode. So again, this is just the basics on spark plugs from our experience with the two stroke racing engines. Um, first thing is if you ever blow your engine up, have a parts failure, debris going through your engine, always get rid of the spark plug. Uh, sometimes damage could occur to the spark plug that you just don't see on the ceramic or on the tips or a ground wire. Um, if you have excessive detonation, get rid of the spark plug. We've seen where excessive heat has caused these ground electrodes to open up and break off in the engine. So again, any damage, on the top end of your engine, get rid of the spark plug. Any electrical problems, top end misses, sputtering, uh, backfire, which you don't really hear too often in a, like a Honda or a Vortex or some of the other karting racing engines. Um, but high end sputters are common. Change the plug. Uh, second, anytime you're racing in a competition or a sanctioned event, make sure you know the rules. Uh, so, for example, if you're running Vortex Rock, they specify you have to run a B10 EG, a B9 EG, or a B8 EG. You cannot run any other plug. So even though a BR10 EG is very similar, per the rules, as petty as it is, that would not be legal. And that's based on the 2018 rules. Uh, same with uh, like SCUSA, if you're running the TAG class. They have two options available, two, uh, for the X30 class. Uh, off the top of my head, I think one of them is a 6252, um, or R6252. I have to double check that. But again, it's in the rule. It's a spec plug. Make sure you run the spec plugs. So we got that stuff out of the way. So the rest of it is just going to be very general. And as you notice... On this plug, which is why I grabbed the B10 intentionally, these tops twist off. And just last week I was servicing two carts and two of the carts that I serviced, this was loose or this was completely stripped out. So when we pulled the plug cap off, this piece right here, this was inside the plug cap. And then if you looked at the threads, you could see the aluminum had stripped out of the cap and you could see the evidence of stripping on the threads and it caused an electrical problem for that particular customer. So what I like to use, um, this is a very general video, but every carter that works on their own equipment should have a pair of safety wire pliers. And the reason I like to use safety wire pliers to tighten the top of the spark plug, I know it's not the perfect tool, but again, every carter should have one in their toolbox if they're working on their own stuff. Because per the rules, many items need to be safety wired. The pliers I have seen have a little radius cutout in it. And that radius cutout just nicely forms to the top of the cap. You just want to give it a light snug when you tighten it. So you don't need to put 5,000 foot pounds of torque on it. Just a light snug so this cap cannot vibrate or come loose under racing conditions. So again, this is not the proper tool for that, but it works out nice. Regular pliers or channel locks or needle nose uh, or dikes, anything else can damage the top of this cap. And then uh, you could have an electrical failure or premature wear um, due to a imperfect surface. So when you pull the spark plug out of the box, always tighten the cap. Many different models option to, uh, offer two versions, one with a threaded cap and one with a solid cap. If you buy the parts from us, if there's an option available for a solid cap, that is always what we sell. So you don't have to worry about it. Also, when you pull a spark plug out of the box, always check the spark plug gap. So the NGK, they recommend 24 thou for this particular spark plug. However, you wanna also contact your engine builder or the engine manufacturer to see what their recommendations are uh, for the heat range spark plug gap. And 
kind of an oddball. I've only seen this one a couple of times over the past few years. Thread reach. We have seen guys run spark plugs that have a 14 millimeter reach or a shorter reach, similar to like uh, the Comer plugs, um, the HIX series from NGK. Um, that will cause electrical problems and uh, engines sputtering at top end. It, it, it's very goofy to troubleshoot, but uh, we've seen it a few times where guys accidentally grabbed the wrong plug. This reach was not the proper reach for, this, for that specific engine and the engine would not run properly. So always double check the thread reach. And another thing we've seen is customers over tightening or over torquing the spark plugs. We've actually seen it where this part here had cracked or the ceramic had cracked. And it never shows up until you're racing and the, you end up with misses. But the proper torque specs per NGK, if you're going into aluminum, is approximately 18 to 21 foot pounds. So if you don't know what a foot pound is, buy a torque wrench and get the feel of what a foot pound feels like. And again, 18 to 21 foot pounds for an aluminum head with this particular cylinder. I'm sorry, spark plug. And some basic spark plug um, apparatus here. You have the ground electrode, which is this part that sticks out. And then you have the electrode, which runs down the center. And this one's a standard electrode. I don't know if you're gonna see it very well in the video there. And then this one has both a fine wire ground electrode and a fine wire electrode. And they can be made out of different material. If it's a spec plug for the series, um, it almost doesn't matter what the material is because it's a spec plug. But, um, you know, they have copper and iridium and, and other exotics for the spark plug. So that's really about it. Again, it was just a very quick and simple spark plug basics.